Good morning, everybody. Yeah, if you're going to do anything, once you hit me out of 40, then. We are now ready to have Sunday school. Yay. And we got lots to talk about today. Yeah. I, I want to praise the Lord for a couple of things right off the bat. Uh, right at it. Uh, oh, not the prison we, thing. No, not the prison thing. We uh, prayed about my one of my tenants. I had her rent this tenant renting for almost 15 years. Never raised her rent. She was a good tenant, but then she fell on hard times, lost her car, uh, lost her phone, had lost her job, got way behind in her rent. And I asked for prayer about it because I really didn't want to kick her out. But the Lord worked it out that this other organization, which I've never even heard of, MILC, yep. they're called, mm -hmm. helps people, Independent living. Yep. tries to keep them from losing their home mm -hmm. yep. when they fall on hard times. And they stepped in, helped her, and paid her back rent. Nice. And we got the, the Praise money this the Lord. week. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise Lord. 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 I was thinking that was more of a medical one, but I didn't realize no. they help with all that. That's independent. Yeah. It's and independent living, I think. Yes. In Messina? Yeah. Messina independent. Yeah. Now independent. Now it's called Maximized yeah. Independent yeah. Living mm -hmm. Center. Yeah. 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 And they will work with her for three months, try to get her a job Good. and, and yeah. help Amazing. her with it's her life. organization. So is it, it, really is it for good. disabled people? Is it for anybody? Anybody. Really? Yeah. I didn't know that. I thought it was just yeah. disabled. Yeah. So that's it, that's, that's like known. It's a, a private organization, kind of like, you know, Grace House mm -hmm. got started. That's what they do. They do exist on grants, mm -hmm. the government, that's wonderful. but they're, they're mm -hmm. a private mm -hmm. group. Uh, oh, so I thought that was great. Mm -hmm. And uh, the second praise, that I want to share is the Gideons had a distribution. We prayed about that too Wednesday night. And it was the best one we've ever had at Potsdam, SUNY wow. Potsdam. We usually give out maybe 30, almost always, or always it's been less than 100. And this time we started out with uh, about 150. And we ran out in the first hour. Wow. So I called Steve, and he had a box at his house for another hundred. So we brought him over a little bit after 12. A little bit after 12.30, they were gone. Wow. So it was 250 to 300. They were very receptive, very thankful and happy. That's awesome. Good. Well, what time do you have to go to music practice? Good. So then. Did you have okay, church won't even get done until noon, honey. I'm already over. Just saying, so able to oh, come. Yay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Today's my wonder button. Yeah, it is. Good. So Jeff asked about yeah, the jail. <laughs> well, oh, no Calvin likes to hear about that. Yeah. Yeah. Three people oh, got right with no, the Lord no, last three so weeks. Uh, so I, I was curious to see what this week is up to. And the guy that. Uh, so he, when he first came in, he said, I have a bunch of demons and he went on about the occult and all that stuff. Oh, okay. so, you can go so he comes back and I'm presenting uh, some pretty deep well, you know what you do this information in the Bible about how uh, we have three enemies in our life. And the enemies are the devil, who is really over it all, the world, in the flesh, and talking about how these things uh, come against us, and how the devil wants to trip us up and rob us and destroy us. And all of a sudden, I look over, and the guy that got saved two weeks ago is having a seizure in my class. And I got up and went over, and, and I prayed for him, and he uh, was in his chair. He stayed in his chair the whole time. But he stiffened right out with the board and was convulsing. And so we lifted him off his chair and laid him down and protected him. And in a couple minutes, he came back too. And then the guards took him back to his room so he could rest. But. I thought about that and I said, that is the enemy That's attacking him in the middle That's of right. us telling him That's about right. how the enemy attacks. That's right. And here the man just got saved. 
Trudeau. So I want to pray for Trevor. Mm -hmm. That's his name. That this doesn't discourage him from coming back. And then the other guy that got saved last week, he apparently was having trouble with Trevor. And I don't know what that was all about. But he didn't even come. Mm -hmm. Then the third guy, that got the other one that got saved, as he walks in the door for his session, one of the CLs in him had a conflict. He comes in all red-faced and mad and said he wanted to punch the wall and didn't want, he acted like he didn't want to hear a word, you know, he was just so angry. And I still had on the board about how the devil uses people in the world and how our flesh gets in the way and causes this trouble. And it was exactly what he was doing. <clears throat> so the devil attacked all three of those guys right after they got saved. Yeah. But by the end of the session, <clears throat> the guy calmed down and he gave me a hug, he was happy, and, and the Lord worked it out. Um, but I just encourage us to keep praying for these guys, because they're in a terrible environment, and they have a lot of baggage. You know, when you get saved, you still got a lot of consequences, <clears throat> and a lot of things to deal with. And the devil don't like it. Mm -hmm. So he's trying to cause all this disruption. Right? Um, but I praise the Lord for that guy that had the seizure. He didn't get hurt. You know, he could have fell out of the chair and cracked his head and all kinds of things. And I, and I still sense the spirit, even while I was praying for him, which made me feel better. I wish that he would have came out of it right away, but that's up to the Lord. Um, so those are my praises and, and events this week. <coughs> Who else got a praise? Praise Lord Leonard's still with us. Yes. <laughs> Didn't get chopped up in the wood process. <laughs> well, then you and I are going to live forever. Right? <laughs> oh. Oh. But, uh, praises this week. Praises well. Not sure about it's a beautiful day. Uh, my daughter was going to come with us with me today to celebrate and join the church. She is off with her mother to Fowler today. They've been her aunt's church as a, a music celebration festival coming up. And they're going to be playing in that. My daughter plays the clarinet. Her mother plays the violin. So does her aunt. So they are scheduled to go to her aunt's house today, leaving at noon to go and practice music. So that would be, she said, I'm sorry. I said, don't be sorry. I mean, you're going to go and do where your heart's drawn and go. I said, so maybe next week she'll come and join us. But I'm praising that what she's doing today, because the music they're playing is all, it's at a church. It's all celebration hymns for the Lord. Okay. They're not out doing rock and roll in short skirts, which would be kind of comical. But, um, <laughs> They are, she picked two different paths, and both of them connected to God, and she picked the one that she needs to put the effort into. And I, I see that as God moving, and I see as her responding, so I'm, I'm praising that right now. Yeah. You know, uh, I managed to mow my whole lawn in one day this week. I praise the Lord for the ability to get that done. That don't sound like much to some people, but it's gotten to where it's taken me two or three days to mow a couple acres of lawn. Yesterday I did Thursday I did it all in one day. Paid for it Friday and Saturday. Well, mine's mm. kind of minor to compare you all you guys, but I was running late this morning. I can't hardly do anything, but I was running late. And my daughter had a party yesterday and she had all the food catered, which is unbelievable to me, but she did. And she had this huge can of can of ziti and it didn't get eaten, so there it is. <laughs> but anyway, I put it in my crock pot this morning, and, and um, I have a locked lid on it. Thank you, God. And I had it in the trunk of my car, and I'm driving down because I'm late. You know, it's like 25 after 9, and here I am, you know. Deer. Excuse me? Deer. No, a person. Oh. Ooh. 
this person was just driving along and all of a sudden slams on his brakes and pulls into it. No dress and white, no nothing. And here I am that far from him and like, <laughs> <laughs> and the, and the, the crock pot just went, <laughs> and I'm like, oh no, I heard it in the trunk. It's like, oh no. So I got out. I, I drove until I was safe, and I pulled over, and I said, I got a mess. I know I have a mess. Not one. The, the lid stayed on. So I said, thank you, God. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah. Thank you to the person who invented that. <laughs> because Shelly brought all of her food, because she lives in Utica. So she brought all the food to my house yesterday morning to heat it up to take it to her house. So I loaded it all in my trunk of my car. It was packed. And I had this, she, she had this awful stuff. But anyway, it was. You didn't was, bring that, did you? No, I did not. <laughs> no, I won't tell her, but he went in the garbage. <laughs> anyway, it was green, some kind of green. Just, but had that, had a lid on it. And if a deer didn't jump out in front of me there, and that went in my trunk, oh. but the lid came off that. Oh, oh no. Really? What a mess. What a smelly mess. <laughs> so I was thankful this morning that the yes. lid stayed on. Yes. Yeah, and I am, I am not feeling the best today, so I'm really, really shaky and exhausted. But I'm here. Well, that's yeah. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Too, too, many, too many jello shots. <laughs> Anyone else? So we, so we want to pray for those guys that just got saved in the ministry, the jail ministry. For Sylvia. <clears throat> what else? Kathy. My sister. Kathy. Yeah. She just has been dealing with some leg pain and it just seems like her, between MS and back, is really bothering her, so just keep her in your prayers. Kathy. And, yep, Kathy. And of course, Susie. And Susan. <laughs> Susan yes. Safe travels for me. Yeah. There you go. No travel yes. Yes. It was John's last Sunday with us. <laughs> and the geese. I know. We were talking, this is just a cute story, but the kids, we have hummingbirds that come to our hummingbird feeder, and he said, oh, it's almost time for them to fly south. And the, my, one of my grandchildren were asking how they fly, how, how they go. And I said, well, you know, the story I hear is that they, they will perch on a goose and fly because <laughs> south. And um, why would they do that? I said, well, when you think about it, they're little. And that, that's a long ways for them to fly that fast. <laughs> so it was just kind of a cute story. Yeah. But you think about it, it's like, well, yeah, all of our little northern and southern people are going to be flocking oh, south. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe on the backs of somebody else, but you know, they'll be going. <laughs> so, Brenda, I have a question for you. You know when you see a v, a v of geese, one side is always longer than the other? Do you know why that is? I used to know, but remind me. There's more geese in it. More <laughs> <laughs> That's an old there joke. Tell that to kids. There you go. Brother Larry. Yes. Try to remember these prayers. And, Danielle. Oh, and Danielle sent us a text just now. Yeah, she's having, she has to take antibiotics that cause her to have anxiety. Ooh. You know, she had pneumonia and she's still mm -hmm. on it. She has a couple more days, one or two more days of antibiotics. But How was she can't take antibiotics without getting anxiety attacks. Mm -hmm. So she, she's almost done, but she said it's kind of bad this morning, mm -hmm. so she wanted some prayer. Sure. Has anybody heard about Wayne? Wayne uh, Washburn? Yeah. Yeah, the oh, fellow. Um, oh, I'm trying to think of it. I have not heard an update as of late recently. Have you issued any surgery? Last I knew, he was doing okay. So. Yeah. So he's got to go back to see the doctor here shortly. And uh, they're hoping he's in a lot of pain with the, mm. the tube that they sewed in there for him for yeah. drainage. And Susie and Wayne are both hoping that they can remove that too. It's this week, I think he's going. She also, might be in church today. Also, Brother Steve's preaching in Madrid. Oh, is he? Mm -hmm. Just got done. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll pray that it was successful. Yes. 
Yeah. Right. Unless he's being long-winded and just got done. Yeah. <laughs> he might be going long. Mm. Okay. <laughs> okay. Father, well, my Father, I thank you for this day, and I thank you for your people, and I thank you for your word, Lord. I want to thank you that the folks that got saved in the jail ministry, Lord, I just want to lift them up to you right now, that you would protect them, give them wisdom and guidance, and help them grow in you, Lord. Use whoever goes to the jail ministry, but Lord, mostly just reach down and use the Holy Spirit there. Yes. And Lord, I want to lift up Kathy. Um, yes, Jesus. You know the problems there with her, something about her leg pain, but you know all the details there. I ask that you just reach down and touch her. Yes. I also want to take this time to lift up Wayne and, yes. and ask that you will just wrap your loving arms around them. Yes. Show them that you yes. love them and that we love them. And we're lifting them up in prayer. And Lord, be with that family as they've been going through a rough time. Yes. And Lord, I pray that you will guide the physicians, give them wisdom and guidance in all that they're doing for them. Yes. And help them get back on the recovery that he was supposed to be. This is going on over a year now. And Lord, I pray that you would just reach down and heal them in your precious name. I plead your blood. Lord, I also want to lift up Sylvia. Reach down and touch our sister, Lord. Show her that you love her and that we love her. And help us remember to lift her up in prayer throughout the week, not just today, but throughout the week. And just help her with everything. As life gets busy with all of us, we, we tend to rush around and things happen. And we we um, just have to deal with it, Lord. Give us the strength to deal with it. Lord, I also want to lift up Sue right now. Yeah. I pray, oh God, that you will guide the doctors and and help Sue feel better. As she said last week, she was getting tired and, and feeling weak with the medicine and the chemo that they're doing. But Lord, I pray that you would just reach down and remove that cancer right now as we speak. And Lord, I pray, oh God, that you would just Give her the strength, her and Paul, and, and just show them that you love them. And Lord, that we love them. And Lord, I pray, oh God, that you just help us with all the other prayer requests. Um, John, as he's traveling, I pray, oh God, that you give him travel mercies and keep him safe and, and protect him, Lord. I ask this all in your precious, most holiest name. And if I forgot some, oh, Brother Steve, as he was preaching, Lord, I pray, oh God, that your hand was in that, and that people heard a good message through, she, through Steve about you, Jesus. I ask this all in your precious, most holiest name. Amen. 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 All right, let's go back to where we left off on page 213. We've got, been talking about confessing things uh, that uh, are hindering us in our walk with the Lord. If you have an addiction, a, a sin that you've been tr trying to overcome and you can't, one of the ideas was confess your sins to each other, pray for each other, that you may be healed. That's a formula for healing. So it's talking about having a support group. So it's pick up where it says at Saddleback Church. Everybody see that? Top of 213? Uh, Susan Q, start a second. At, oh, excuse me. at Saddleback Church, we have seen the awesome power of this principle to break the grip of seemingly hopeless addictions and persistent temptations through a program we developed called Celebrate Recovery. It is a biblical eight-step recovery process based on the Beatitudes of Jesus and built around small group, small support groups. In the past 10 years, over 5,000 lives have been set free from all kinds of habits, hurts, and addictions. Today, the program is used in thousands of churches. 
I highly recommend it for your church. The man that's supposed to be joining me for music in the jail ministry, Pastor Brad, from the Calvary Baptist Church in Canton, they teach that over there. And Franny, who comes to 4 o'clock Bible study, teaches it with the women's group in the prison after she does the regular chapel. Isn't so that what Brenda and Bruce Stone do? Yeah, they're the ones doing it in his church. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, I've heard good things about it. Mm -hmm. uh, Sister Brenda? Satan wants you to think that your sin and temptation are unique, so you must keep them a secret. The truth is, we are all in the same boat. We all fight the same temptations, and all of us have sinned. Millions have felt what you're feeling and have faced the same struggles you're facing right now. The reason we hide our faults is pride. <clears throat> We want others to think we have everything under control. The truth is, whatever you can't talk about is already out of control in your life. Problems with your finances, marriage, kids, thoughts, sexuality, secret habits, or anything else. If you could handle it on your own, you would have already done so. But you can't. Willpower and personal resolutions aren't enough. Some problems are too ingrained, too habitual, and too big to solve on your own. You need a small group or an accountability partner who will encourage you, support you, pray for you, love you unconditionally, and hold you accountable. Then you can do the same for them. Yeah, what do you think about that? I'd be nice to have one here. Mm. That's the same principle they use in 12-step groups. It's the same, same idea, accountability partner, a sponsor, whatever you want to call it. I've had one two or three times in my life. I don't have one right now and I know the difference. It makes a difference when you have... These groups are absolutely wonderful. I look forward to prayer meeting more than anything else. Or this adult Sunday school more than even listening to the preaching um, because of the interaction. But when you have a dedicated sponsor, partner, and you can share those nitty-gritty details that aren't appropriate to share in a bigger group like this. It's just not the right place and time. It helps. It's like washing your hands. Instead of just using soap, you get the brush out and clean it under your nails. That's what that's like, because it digs right into the stuff that doesn't want to come out. The stuff that you like to hang on to, our favorite sins. And it really, that uh, accountability, or this, what is the name of this group? Celebrate Recovery. Celebrate Recovery. They've actually got an online ministry. There are tens of thousands of people that go to it uh, two or three times a week all across the country. Uh, it, it's, it, it does an amazingly good thing. Um, it gives people a place to be safe and share what's going on. Now, the nitty gritty things you're talking about that aren't appropriate in a group setting, do they share those? That's oh, yeah. Well, what will happen then is if you really want to get down <laughs> into the the stuff that we really hang on to with pride, the stuff that really embarrasses us, that we know is wrong, but we just don't think we should, the devil telling us. When you have that one other individual who's got the same issues, then you can share that back and forth and you feel safe because it's just you and you and this other person. But you're not doing that in the group setting? Not in the bigger sense. Some people do, but you usually don't because you can't discourse on it enough so to get it. So how do they, what do they do? Find a, Find a yeah, group? In, in the groups, you, you, you contact somebody and you become they become your sponsor or vice versa. And then they meet separately? You can meet online, you can meet over the phone, you can meet face-to-face, -face, depending, on, depending on how it works out. Kind of like a mentor. Yeah. Exactly the same thing. It's just a different word for the same thing. I had one um, after I came back from the war. I had alcohol problems and I had a sponsor. Yeah. Oh, and, yeah. uh, I could call them day or night, anytime, anytime I felt, you know, any problems, like, you know, I might want a drink or anything, all I had to do was get on the phone and call them. As a matter of fact, he found me a, a good job at the Episcopal Church, um, where I was for seven years, um, also. And, and then, when you called him, would he come to see you? Yep. Or yeah, if you know, if he, you talk to each other on the phone, or if I needed him there, he would come and see me. That's so. 
Yeah. Yeah. He was available 24 hours. And had prayer with you? I think he was a Christian man or? Uh, or, or not? That was a long time ago. I don't remember, but oh, you yeah. know, he worked through AA. Okay. So, um, huh. well, the 12 steps of AA were started by two men that were reading the Bible. <clears throat> the AA steps are built on, originally built on, <clears throat> biblical teachings. Yeah. Um, I see a sponsor, especially if he's a Christian sponsor. Boy, that would be so awesome to have something. They, like they, they are physical, and we are to them physical representations of Jesus, because. They come to us physically, so we have another living presence. But they bring the Holy Spirit with them. Uh, I've never had a sponsor that wasn't a Christian. Plus, with the AA program, you believe in a higher power. Yeah, you believe in a higher. They call it a higher power. They do that so people that don't know God yet aren't uncomfortable. But you know that causes confusion, somewhat, when Some you talk about do, a higher they're... power. One thing I come across in the jail a lot is these guys have so many mixed up ideas. Yeah. They're getting, you know, a little bit of, there's power in uh, the Vikings, there's power in some other thing, and higher powers, and it's, it's just confusing. You try to- and That's why you're there. Yeah, but that's something I have to- But at least they're I looking- work through. What I like about that is yes, they're headed in the wrong direction as far as the Vikings or a rock or a squirrel or whatever. Yeah. But the fact that they realize there's something beyond themselves that's actually in control opens the door for the word of Jesus to come into their hearts. Because they already realize they can't do it on their own. Yeah. And that's the first step to say, I need help beyond the beyond the human, beyond the physical. And well, that's well why do they have to use the higher power? Why don't they just stick well, one of the reasons, one of the reasons they did it over the years is there is a large, very large community of people that are lesbian or gay that come to these meetings. Now, some of them will be drawn to the word of Christ and their lives will be changed. Some won't. But you don't attract people with a hammer. The idea is to get them in the rooms and get them talking and then they can decide what they're going to do. A lot of meetings won't use higher power. A lot of the meetings use only God. That's how it is. I think that'd be the only one I'd use. Well, yeah, but that, that, but that gives you the option. That's the whole point. I'm not saying they're right or wrong. I'm just saying you've got to find some way to get the door open. And, yeah, and that's what they're well, doing. I understand that. You know? But planting seeds, to me. Oh, yeah, that's well, that's the, what you're doing. That's the biblical way. You plant, but you want to you plant, plant seeds. Tell the truth, if they reject it, yeah. they've at least heard it. Yeah, and you want to plant seeds in fertile ground. I don't like the idea of planting higher power because no. it opens the door to too many things <clears throat> besides the truth. Well, but that's my thinking. That's not necessarily the right thinking. Well, no, no, I'm not saying you're wrong. I, I agree with you. Being but I, I do like the idea of the group. Yeah, the group. Coming together, yeah. getting help, uh, praying one for another, being available any hour, day or night. Um, I like to think that I would be available day or night. I just don't have... Uh, the knowledge to address every problem that people well, it's, have. Well, the knowledge isn't the point. The point is being available and just listening. You don't even have to give answers sometimes. You know, I've got a sponsor. Sometimes you don't even give answers. You just let the person talk to you. Mm -hmm. And what I would do with them is the same thing John Saunders used to do with me. Okay, this is what you're confronting. Look at this verse and this verse and this verse. Read those, meditate on those, and come back and talk to me tomorrow or the next day or whatever. And tell me what you got from them. It's not about giving advice. It's not about knowing anything. It's good if you know the Bible. But, you know. And then there's those people you just can't reach and help, like Leonard, who's hanging off a wood chipper. There's nothing you can do for him. Just take it away from him. Yeah. yeah. The other thing you mentioned that you asked me if he was a Christian. Well, he was the one. He uh, went to that church, the Episcopal Church. Okay. So he was a Episcopal. He probably was. Yeah. 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 Yeah, the best one. I think always that could be something for these guys that are getting out of jail, and instead of having this revolving door all the time, yep. uh, it'd be nice if they had a group to, to connect with, and a church, and got their lives on track. Well, they get out of jail and they're they're floundering around, and six months later they're back in jail. Yeah, because they go right back to old habits. Yeah. It's just and they put them all in the same place, you know, in a cheap motel or halfway house and 
some of them that are there never did get saved. Even the ones that did get saved, now they're still exposed to all of those other temptations. And the devil finds work for idle hands, doesn't he? Yeah. So that celebrate recovery would be a good thing to point them to. Yeah. So let's go a little further. Uh, Brother Jeff. Okay, where did we leave off? We, when, whenever? Whenever someone confides to me, the first verse. Top of two oh, okay, I was way over on the other page, excuse <laughs> me. Whenever someone confides to me, quote, I've never told this to anyone until now, I get excited for that person because I know they are about to experience great relief and liberation. The pressure valve is going to be released, and for the first time, they are going to see a glimmer of hope for their future. It always happens when we do what God tells us to do by admitting our struggles to a godly friend. Let me ask you a tough question. What are you pretending isn't a problem in your life? What are you afraid to talk about? You're not going to solve it on your own. Yes, it is humbling to admit our weaknesses to others, but lack of humility is the very thing that is keeping you from getting better. The Bible says, quote, God sets himself against the proud, but he shows favor to the humble. So humble yourselves before God. There's a scripture. The, the broken and contrite heart the Lord will not despise. Yep. Uh, sometimes we need to pray, break us, Lord. Because we don't realize our need. Do you remember the definition of ego? Edging out of God. Edging God out. Oh, yeah. That's what ego does. Edging it pushes God, God out. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's... Uh, I'm, I'm dying. That's one of my greatest sins right there, is that I think I, I can do it on my own. Yeah. Yeah. Edging God out. Edging that's God out. Ego. Yeah, when you think about it, that is. Yeah, true. you're putting yourself ahead of God. You're pushing him out. And he'll let you if you want him. Yeah. It won't end well, but you can go ahead and do it anyway. God never forces himself upon us. Nope. He does. He's only but I did have a, a Christian brother one time say that he went to the altar and he, he couldn't help it. Yeah. And, you know, like the Lord pushed him up there. Holy and he got Spirit. saved. Holy Spirit, yeah. Yeah. So yeah. there's some strong persuasion the Lord yeah. uses sometimes, I think. Yes, I felt that before. That your heart pumps and you, yeah. you just, you know, it's, you're fighting it, but yeah. <laughs> don't fight God. <laughs> or people, the Holy Spirit. I've heard of people hanging on to the pew with white knuckles because uh -huh. they uh -huh. didn't want to go. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, you know, I think about it. Why? Why is it? My father said to me one time, a long time ago, he said, um, Jesus died on the cross publicly. People watched. So why can't we go publicly in front of him? Yes, that ego. Yeah. 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 And I never forgot that. I'm like, yeah, that's you right. Know. Yeah. And, and the, I think that's kind of like allowing ourselves to be broken mm -hmm. and open uh, to the Lord when we do that. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you got to do that every week. But if the Lord's telling you to every week, mm -hmm. then we need to do yeah. it. Mm -hmm. And you don't the Lord know is showing us. if it'll cause someone else to be like, oh, somebody else is up there, maybe I can go. Mm -hmm. Not, you know, because we always worry about, you know, what other people think, <laughs> I guess. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we, we have to get past that. That's part. that ego. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Again. Oh. Pride, vanity, it's all One pride. thing I ha it does bother me, though, that I've noticed over the years, the change in our altar, mm -hmm. is we're too quick. Years ago, people talked about praying through. Mm -hmm. You go to the altar and you, you lay your request and you pray until you feel that the Lord has answered it. Mm -hmm. And I think it's hard to pray through and 30 seconds, mm -hmm. you know. I, I've been in services where 
they stop the service because of the altar call, or the musicians would continue to pray, play softly. Yep. And even the preacher sometimes would go back to preaching, and the person would stay at the altar. And there might even be a little bit of soft music while they're there. But you knew that you could take as much time as you wanted at the altar. And sometimes the preacher would say uh, at the end of the service, um, for those of you who have to leave, feel free to do so, but please be respectful of the people that are still at the altar and leave quietly. Um, because why are we running up to the altar and running back? Pride. Um, the song was so short that yeah. I didn't have time to even say amen. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> you know, that's something that we have, we might want to think about. Well, I was in a church for a while down in Allentown. It was an inner city church. And it was the place that where you went to church in the morning, there would be prostitutes and drug dealers sitting on the church steps. Yeah. But they wanted to come to the church. <laughs> Praise the Lord. And when they had an altar call, they didn't do it a lot, but when they had an altar call, there were more people kneeling or at or as close to the altar as they could get than there were sitting in the pews. Yeah. You know, the only people sitting in the pews were those of us that already thought we were yeah. good. <laughs> us old veterans. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're good. I went to the altar 40 that. years ago. Yeah. 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 Uh, the other, that reminds me of something else. We should encourage people that can't kneel to just come to the front row. Yeah. Or whatever row is open. Yeah. That, that's the same thing. You're humbling yourself. But some people, you know, you're too hard to kneel. You look at me while well, I'm sitting in the back where I do. Yeah. By the time I got up front to the altar call, it would be next Sunday's church. Right. All right. <laughs> but I can sit right in my chair, and I've done it many times, yeah. and be in prayer about well, certain things. So if you feel the Lord's telling you to get up there, you best be working. Oh, if he tells me to get up there, I've talked to him about it. He said, no, you stay in your chair. You're all right. Okay. But, you know, it just, but I'm mindful of the fact that as far as I'm concerned, when, as soon as you enter the service, mm -hmm. the altars are open. Yeah. So it, it's, it doesn't just start on a queue. Right. And that's the other message we have to get across yeah. to people. Larry? So the altar is um, special for us, whoever has that need. But it's also for the other people. That's like you always said in your chair. Yeah. We really want to know how to pray for you. Yes. So going up front helps the other believers get around and help you feel um, the connection there. So right. the altars to me is always personal. Even if you do have a handicap or mm -hmm. can't get up there, it's important to be up there at the altar to me. I remember when Sylvia went forward to get baptized. Oh, jeez. And so did uh, Becky. Becky. Yeah. That was an act of obedience. Uh, oh, yeah, but you, you had, had not expected. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't have your shoes on? I didn't have my shoes on. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even notice. No, I, well, I hate to tell you this, but a lot, just, of his life, a lot of his life, Jesus wasn't wearing shoes either. Right. <laughs> but that, that obedience is what God wants. Right. Right. I didn't even yeah. have a, I, I shouldn't say choice, because you have a choice, but it was like, it was like, Time to go. He, he kind of like, I shouldn't say forced either. I don't know what it was. Kind it was just like compelled. You're you're going. <laughs> yeah. That's, yeah. I went. That's when the Lord is is strong in our lives, and we want him to be that way. And I think Pastor was shocked. <laughs> He's like, "You want what?" <laughs> <laughs> well, but, you said it. But <laughs> we we shouldn't be afraid to do these things because. It's either real or it's not real. Are we just pretending or is it real? You if know, it's real, then let's do it. One time during the week, I had I was it was I had a really, 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 really bad day. So I came here and I wanted to go to the altar. <clears throat> I wasn't allowed to go. Hmm. Hmm. I don't understand that. Well, I will tell you the reason I stopped attending the Bethlehem First Church in the Nazarene. One of the reasons, I was on the Sunday School Ministries Board. I was the Children's Church Director for about four years. And one of the reasons we stopped going is that was an inner city church and the demographic had changed. It wasn't 
white families that worked at the, at the <coughs> Bethlehem Steel Works. <coughs> the inner city houses were cheaper, so you were getting minority groups moving into these homes because they could afford them. And they were the predominant people living around that church. Within three blocks of that church, there were thousands of people. And one of the things they developed was as soon as the service started, they locked the outside doors of the church, wouldn't let anybody in. Because of safety or what? Didn't want the service disturbed. Didn't want the clean oh, church. They didn't want, didn't want the, the wrong people to come? That's not what they were saying, but that's what they were doing. And we confronted them, the church board and the pastor, and said, why are you doing this? Well, you know, it's a, it, it's a, san it's a sanctified moment. Wait a minute. Hmm. And well, that kept continuing, which is like, that's enough. Oh, just um, to me is I just cleaned it. You what? Oh, just cleaned it. I just cleaned it. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it's it's just. And it was yeah, stupid. We got to be careful. Was, yeah. What a building! It was huge, and they had their own NBA-sized basketball court in the building. Yeah. And you've got all these facilities. It's one of the things I like about this place. This place is busy all week long. There's people coming because I was just talking to Cindy. There was people in here this week using, and it's a house of God. Yeah. You know, open it up. Well, we have to, we're, we're all human. People make yeah, wrong choices, wrong decisions. Yeah. Yeah. We have to remember that. But we have to do the best we can. Yep. Yeah. And, and remember, it's not about us. Nope. Get that ego out of there. Right. Well, that's what happened in that yeah. church. It became yeah. a very small little group of older people. And there was a few of them that had a lot of money they were pouring into the church. And they didn't want things to only go one way. So that's how it went. That's when you give it to God and say, God. That's, I gave it to God and moved on. Because we tried everything we could think yeah, of. I can yeah. understand that. And it's like, okay, we can't, we can't affect them to change here. So Ooh, let's. Just a little tiny girl when I was going to the Wesleyan Church in, in Colton. I was tiny. And they had an altar call. I didn't go to the altar because, and I just sat in my seat and just, I was crying my eyes out. And all the kids around me were laughing at me because I was crying. And I thought, something's wrong with me because they're laughing at me and, and ever since then i've had this thing it's like you can't help it you can't help but feel that when you're little and and kids are laughing at you it's like what is wrong with me what is wrong with me that that i'm crying and they're laughing at me and so there's something wrong with me because i'm not right. doing what these kids are doing you know right. Right. and so you you and here i am 70 years old and i still get that feeling mm -hmm. but i know what's wrong now i mean i knew i've known it for years that it was wrong but you still get that feeling in there it's yeah, like memory yeah yeah feelings don't yeah. have brains but they have a lot of power and memories are hard to... Oh, they are. Really they are. But I know I know now what that was, why that was the way it was. Mm -hmm. because but, but were you crying because the Spirit was moving oh, on you? Yeah. Well, praise the Lord oh, for absolutely. that. Oh, absolutely. Then you should be happy that that happened because God's given you a reward yeah. for their bad behavior. They were... They were yeah, that's uh, what I was thinking. The Bible says, jump for joy when people despite you use you again. because but, of your faith. And I understand that now, but at that point, oh, yeah, you wouldn't know I didn't that. understand right. that. You know, I thought I was doing something yeah. because I was, it's just the way I was back then, you know. I would be, I would say, Lord, thank you. Oh, I, I do, I do today, that. but it's, when I talk about it, I get shaky and I yeah. get emotional and, but yes. I, I get emotional because I know I did the right thing. Yeah. And memories that hurt can be hurtful. Yeah. And, and Sylvia, one other thing you might want to take into your inventory of things to think about. Somewhere in that crowd of kids laughing, there might have been one or two that after they got done laughing because it was all the idiots are on the same team, one or two of them might have said, well, why was she crying? What was yeah. she? You might have sparked an interest, your faith and your belief and your feeling. I don't know. Somebody through all that carrying on might have later on gone, why? And that's the seed being planted right there. I had a, my, the Gideon partner, he's brand new, just joined, his first distribution. And I thought, oh, you know, he's apt to be discouraged when kids are, if kids are rude 
or just walk by you like you're a tree. You know you're offering them a Bible. And he said, no. He said, even when they say no, he goes, uh, I planted a seed of conviction. Yep. Yep. And that. Uh, because now when they leave, they're going to be thinking about what oh, yeah. I no, said no. it, yeah. So you did the same thing. Those mm -hmm. kids, they had a, a seed planted. <coughs> Maybe they didn't realize it right away. I'll bet you they did later. Oh, yeah. At well, some I point. I know some of those kids today, and I... <laughs> well, it doesn't, it doesn't <laughs> mean that they them. responded. Right. Yeah. They, you know, they, but yep. I'll bet you the Lord spoke to them hmm. at some point in their life, and they think back. And, and it's funny how that just constantly is on my mind. I ne I have never forgot that. Well, the devil so, is trying to beat you down with it. Yeah, right. He's trying to keep you from from obeying God right. and ever oh, revealing your feelings again. He's not winning. It just it gets matters. me emotional. Yeah. But, yeah. yeah, rebuke it. When you have that that memory, uh, when it begins to bother you, you say, "I rebuke that memory in Jesus' name." Thank you, Lord. I, I, I want to review, I want to forget that memory, but I don't want to forget that memory because mm -hmm. it was a special. No, but you can review but it, the effects of it. Mm -hmm. well, that's true. That's true. Uh, would, you, would you want to say something? Well, about? I just was thinking that you know when when we first got saved, um, it was hurtful. Um, some of our family members and oh, stuff yeah. didn't want you know holy than thou, you know, and all that stuff. But I was, I praise God because I wanted to be different than them. I wanted them to see, because they knew what I was like before. Um, and I still got a long ways to go. And then what helped me was to uh, remember, you know, what they did for our, to Jesus, for, for us. And that helps me, you know, a lot. And them, them people that you said you doubt if they come to know the Lord, if they don't come to know the Lord, we can still pray for them. Absolutely. But yeah. guess what? God won't forget that time. And when it comes judging time, they won't forget it either. Yeah, yeah that's right. You know, so, so when they laugh at us, let them laugh at that's us. That's a reward we yeah. just, they just gave us. Because yeah. God's going to reward us whenever we are ridiculed or picked on or persecuted because of our faith. Yeah. Yeah, I've even prayed... Uh, that the Lord would show me how to uh, meet with them and when they're in hurting, you know, and stuff, so I could show them our Lord, you know, so they would come to the seat. And he has done that sometimes. Mm -hmm. Not all the time, but he has. Hey, let's go a little further. Brother John. <clears throat> he says to devil, after we have humbled ourselves and submitted to God, we are then told to defy the devil, to resist, to rest. The rest of James 4, 7 says, resist the devil and he will flee from you. That is a good scripture to memorize. Mm -hmm. uh, but the first part is what we want to remember as well. First part is submit yourselves therefore unto God. That's step one. Yeah. We, we submit ourselves to God in obedience. Then resist the devil, yeah. and he'll flee from you. We can't say, "I'm going to, I'm not going to give in to my temptation," if I haven't been submitting myself to God, <coughs> and expect the devil to leave. It's it's two things: obeying God, then resisting the devil. You can't say, "Well, I'm going to this. God doesn't want me to drink, and while I'm having this bottle of booze, I'm going to resist the devil." <laughs> no, that don't work out. <laughs> no, you're just going to see the devil riding pink elephants. That's mm -hmm. like, right. so, so we don't want to forget that part. Okay, go ahead, John. We don't pass passively resign ourselves to his attacks. We are to fight back. The New Testament often describes the Christian life as a spiritual battle against evil forces, using war terms like such as fight, conquer, strive, and overcome. Christians are often compared to soldiers serving in the enemy territory. Remember that song we sang as kids? We are in the, in the Lord's army. Yeah. 
We might not fly over the enemy, but we're in the Lord's army. We forget that. We're not supposed to be just beat up victims, downtrodden Christians, because we serve the Lord. And we just got to put up with all the devil's attacks and all that stuff. No, we can fight against them. Greater is he who is in us. So why can't I rebuke him? What can the devil do to me that God doesn't allow? Nothing. So who's greater? Who's in me or the devil? Who's in me? I can take authority over him. Rebuke him. Plead the blood. Pray against him. And expect God to deliver me and help me. Bring me through it. We're not just suffering saints because we're Christians. And the big we're, part of that is the beginning of that was you have to humble yourself before God, which is like go with that ego. Yeah. Because we can't drive Satan out. We are we are built like Satan in many ways in a fallen world. Very, very much connected to him because of the fall. But with, and that's why without God we can't resist it. Right. Because you know he None of this is on our own. No. On our own, we're and, yeah. and we have to be humble and connected to God and penitent. And then God will say, okay, Satan, he's mine. Go away. Right. I'm paraphrasing. But how many people think them of themselves as a warrior? Yeah. They're supposed to be fighting the enemy. There's a lot of being victims. <laughs> There's a lot of people that like to think of themselves as martyrs. And that not no. <laughs> that no. We're supposed to fight. Yeah, exactly. Fight the good fight. When, you're, when it's all said and done, you're still standing. Yep. And what do you fight with? Sword the of the word. Spirit. Sword the sword spirit. of the Spirit. Yep. How can you fight if you don't know the word? Yep. How's your memorization coming? Everybody got that shortest verse in the Bible memorized? <laughs> now go to the next long shortest. Okay, keep going. Brother John, where are you? Uh, he can, how can, how can we resist? Oh, okay. Sister Sylvia, how can we resist? How can we resist the devil? Paul says, put on the salvation, salvation, salvation as your helmet. Take the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. The first step is to accept God's <coughs> salvation. You won't be able to say no to the devil unless you said yes to Christ. Without Christ, we are defenseless against the devil. But with the helmet of salvation, our minds are protected by God. Remember this, if you are a believer, Satan cannot force you to do anything. He can only suggest. Very true. I told that inmate, he came in all red-faced, angry, wanting to punch the wall. And I said, the devil can't make you do anything. This, you, you still, this, the CO can't make you do anything as far as your thinking goes. It's up to you. And the greater is he who's in you than he who's in the world. So the devil can't make me do these things. He can sure make temptation strong and make it very difficult, but he can't force me. Tell us what second thing is. So. Let me continue. Yeah. Second, you must use the word of God as your weapon against Satan. Jesus modeled this when he was tempted in the wilderness. Every time Satan suggested a temptation, Jesus countered by quoting scripture. He didn't argue with Satan. He didn't say, I'm not hungry. When tempted to use his power to meet a personal need, he simply quoted scripture from memory. We must be the, do the same. There is power in the word and Satan fears it. You believe that? Yep. Amen. Power in the Word. There's a song for that, isn't there? Power yes. in the blood. That's in the blood. Mm -hmm. But the Word has power too. Oh, yeah. Why does the Word have power? It's God's Word. It's His spoken it's his... Word in the world. And it's actually Jesus. Yeah. So in the beginning was the Word. The yeah. Word was God. Uh, word was with God. Word was God. Word and then, was with God. The word was with God and the word was God. Yep. And it goes on to tell us that Jesus is the word. So there's power in the word. We've got to use it. Sister Vicky over there. 
Yes, sir. Would you read a little bit? Sure. Don't ever try to argue with the devil. He's better at arguing than you are, having had thousands of years of practice. You can't bluff Satan with logic or your opinion, but you can use a weapon that makes him tremble the truth of God. This is why memorizing scripture is absolutely essential to defeating temptation. You have quick access to it, whether whenever you're tempted, like Jesus, you have the truth stored in your heart, ready to be remembered. If you don't have any Bible verses memorized, you've got no bullets in your gun. <laughs> I challenge you to memorize one verse a week for the rest of your life. Imagine how strong you'll be. One verse a week. Is that too much to ask? <laughs> Maybe not at the beginning, <laughs> but for a little long time. <laughs> but really, it, it, we had to try that. Try to learn one verse this week, besides Jesus wept. <laughs> we'll have a test next week. I want you to be able to say, I've learned one new verse next week. Okay, time to close in prayer. Sister Donna, welcome back. Hope you had a good trip. Yes, we did. <laughs> Can you uh, close us in prayer? Sure. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you that we can gather in freedom and just worship you, Father God. We thank you for your word. We thank you for this book that... Um, just reinforces everything that you said, Lord God. And we thank you that we don't have to do things in our own strength, that we can rely on you, and that your Holy Spirit lives within us to guide us and direct us every single day. And Lord, um, thank you that uh, you showed us how how it's done when uh, temptations come into our life and all the things of the world hitting us. Um, you've just shown us how to handle that, Lord, and we're, we're so grateful for that. We just pray, Father God, that you'd be with each and every one of us this week, be with our pastor as he gives the message today, um, be with all of us uh, during the lunch today, and just wonderful fellowship, and we just thank you, Father, for loving us so much, and we just give the rest of this day and this week to you, Father God. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Bible study, 4 o'clock. Now i got to figure out a, an easy verse to learn. Yeah. <laughs>